Okay, um, my name is Beck Lane. Behind me is Making a Way. We've been covering it, covering, uh, Making a Way Out of No Way. We've been covering it in multiple videos, but this is going to be put to bed. Uh, she has been reworked, and I'm not sure how much you can see, but she has been reworked in all throughout the entire canvas from corner to corner, from top, top to bottom. Every single corner of this has been reworked and she has become the painting I wanted her to be. The effective image and images I wanted her to be. I did the edging, which means I, I painted the profiles on the canvas and that just sparked. And also knowing that she has a home, she has a home. She has a home where she will be loved and appreciated really lifted the spirits. It lifted my spirits. And it got me to completely rework everything in, in areas where it felt unfinished and it didn't have the impact that I wanted it to have. It now has the impact. And there's a lot of meaning behind this. There's very intricate meanings uh, very intricate symbols. Um, there's a lot going on, but there's one particular spot, which if you've watched any videos or seen this online, you're going to notice. My friend Melanie's hair has a tremendous amount more detail in it. Now, I was watching, uh, I got on a Netflix kick again the other day and started watching a documentary, a food documentary called um, High on the Hog. And what I love is that the, the uh, well, High on the Hog, is, uh, the, the documentary is actually based on a book that connects um, communities and countries in Africa and through their enslavement connects, uh, or through, the peop through uh, enslaved people's uh, connections, sorry, still not awake, uh, enslaved people's connections <coughs> from Africa to the United States and the threads and the blood and the food that binds. And so I was watching that, uh, watching the documentary based on the book and the host was to, was just fantastic in the way he, he interacted with people and the, the conversations. It was very month, much Anthony Bourdain, who we all miss, uh, but with African-American black history being the basis and how strong uh, the connections of food are and recipes are from, as I said, Africa to America and how the, the foods and the recipes and the people uh, built America. It, it <coughs> I was reminded how much of the U.S., us, owes our African-American uh, brothers and sisters throughout the generations. And so I incorporated uh, bits that I was reminded of and have had the privilege to forget about, but reminded of and added uh, to Melanie's hair and to different bits. Uh, the first, um, I was reminded in High on the Hog, and please watch it, it's phenomenal. I was reminded on High in, the, in High on the Hog that um, enslaved people benefited this country financially and actually built this country's wealth. The first product, the first produce that they, that they um, were responsible uh, for gifting us was rice. The United States' first foothold in financial success, the thing that made us wealthy in the beginning, was rice. So rice has been added to the section of Melanie's hair, as well as indications of rice plant. So there's rice up there. Now her afro has true, has a more layered meaning. But I also added something I think is so beautiful, okra. Okra is a plant that is in, um, that is, a, along with rice, uh, one of the basis for so many 
African recipes, um, especially in the um, was the West Coast, uh, uh, West Coast where uh, enslaved people were captured, and 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 um, sold into slavery through Benin and other states. Anyway, uh, uh, okra is a staple in many African recipes and the seeds were bought, brought from Africa to the United States and planted here. And so okra is, uh, became a staple in the South here in the United States because of, because of enslavement. They were bringing flavors of home, a reminder of who they really are, who their families are, where their feet are actually planted where their spirit is it was brought from Africa to the United States that they that that feeling of strength and understanding in themselves and just this, this is not who I am the enslavement is not who I am I am this person for just a few minutes through food enslaved people were able to be home and share the recipe with with uh, other enslaved people, children, and through generations, we're able to say, this is not who we are. This is who we are. So um, although okra, I think, is a really beautiful plant on the outside, and it could be indicated in her arms, but I'm thinking of it more as sugarcane. You can take it any way you like, because sugarcane was another industry that enslaved people um, enslaved people <sighs> cultivated for or for forced to cultivate. Let's not whitewash it. Let's not disnify this. They were forced to cultivate. They gave their lives their through no choice of their own. They were worked to death to cultivate sugarcane, rice, and so and cotton, which is indicated throughout the painting. Cotton, cotton, the fabric of our lives. Let's think about that for a second. Cotton, the fabric of our lives. And anyone who's in my age range remembers that commercial when they were trying to sell us the beauty of cotton and pushing aside how it was cultivated, who, whose backs, whose lives. This very United States and American, you know, plant was based in who's how many millions of lives were destroyed because of cotton the fabric of our lives the fabric of our lives that haunts me so anyway uh, uh okra is a really beautiful plant especially when you take the okra and you dice it or slice it into these uh what do they have eight prongs two four six eight. yeah eight prong stars it is so lovely it is so beautiful and so i have okra running throughout melanie's hair of course i have yellow uh cotton blossoms we have cotton the cotton balls throughout and then we have cherry blossoms we owe so much to our african-american um brothers and sisters running back hundreds of four over 400 years uh, 1619, enslaved people were brought here and sold and then worked to death. We owe them everything. The United States owes them everything. And, and this happens to be Memorial Day. And it's something we need to recognize. Not just think about, recognize. They built the United States. I mean, they built uh, Washington, D.C. as indicated in the pillars. Uh, throughout the painting, but they built our cities. They built our countryside. Uh, in High on the Hog, I was reminded that uh, rice paddy fields in the south can be seen from space. Rice paddy fields that enslaved Africans were brought here to build can be seen from space. What a profound thought, what a profound idea. 
And speaking of profound, we're this is going to be the last video under the guise of Studio 120. This and several relationships I've been building over the past uh, few years and that have now developed into something more, um, not romantic, but business and art-based, uh, very strong relationships and conversations I've especially been having uh, for the past month or so um, have really propelled me to really, really rethink Studio 120. I've said things have got to change, things have got to change, things have got to change, and I haven't changed them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Studio 120 and we're going to put it to the side. I'm not going to delete the videos. I'm not going to be ashamed of them, pretend they never existed. It shows the growth and change and all the stuff about being an artist, the real end about being an artist but it was all based in frustration and sadness and trying really hard, desperately hard to be seen, understood and accepted and acknowledged. We're gonna take Studio 120 and we're gonna, we're gonna put it to the side and we're gonna take from now on, and we're going to take this this channel and these videos and push us in a new direction because I think I've got it now. And whereas in Studio 120, it was more um, half the time an apology. I'm sorry I exist uh, and, and like, I'm sorry I'm bothering you, art world. We are now going to move forward. We are moving forward as if, sort of. Uh, we are going to focus on our strengths. We are going to focus on really looking at art, really looking at art as, as art appreciators or artists. I've got a lot of things planned. Uh, some of the ideas are solid. Some of them are still rolling around in my, my little head, but we're going to change. We're going to evolve. We're going to leave the sadness behind. Well, which way? Right to left? Okay, we're going to leave Studio 120 behind. We're going to leave the sadness and frustration behind. We're going to find a way to move forward. Not find a way. We are moving forward. COVID restrictions are being lifted. People's attitudes are changing. We're not, we don't have to feel that sadness and that cap on our abilities as, as a culture or as artists or society. We don't have to feel that. We've had a collective, you will sit in this, ow, you will sit in this box of collective cultural hammering of who we are. Need I say more? We're, we're, we're crawling out from under the hammer. We're lifting the hammer. We are going to become, we are becoming the people, the artists, the entities, the creators that we want to be. And what was the name of the channel? Uh, what did I want to call it? I went through so many different uh, names the past few days. Uh, one was Conundrum. A friend of mine called me, someone who's known me since I was a child, once said, you're a conundrum wrapped in an enigma. A con okay, get the glasses off your nose. A conundrum wrapped in an, in an enigma. I thought that was so perfect. And lately, it's been popping up in conversations with people who had no idea that descriptor exists. And it happened again the other day. Oh, less, less, oh a week, actually, the full week. Beck, you're a conundrum. And I would go, a conundrum wrapped in an enigma. Thank you. So I went through different names of con using conundrum, using enigma. Uh, and then I went, mm, I don't know about that. So because we want to move, we don't want to keep moving, right? The left. Yeah, we don't want to st stay stuck in the Studio 120 mo mode. We want to move forward in a clearer, stronger, more confident direction. So I went through several different names and this uh, caveat was one of them. I also like caveat, but that sounded really kind of lofty and snotty and just arrogant. Uh, what was it? What was it? I was thinking. 
caveat studio or studio caveat. And then the more I thought about it, the more I thought it, it represents everything I dislike about most art channels or painting channels or, you know, artist channels where they're talking down to people or teaching really simplistic things that you can find on, find on 5,000 million other channels on YouTube. So this is what I came up with. Because we're not going to be talking about um, color theory. I don't know color theory. We're not going to be talking about warms and cools. I don't know warms and cools. I don't care. We're going to be talking about doing the work as we always have, but in a far more confident way as artists, as professional, successful, I know who I am, artists. So this is what I came up with this morning. I was thinking about the word catalyst. Catalyst. That's who we want to be. We don't want to stay in the Studio 120 um, little hamster wheel that we've been on of someday, one day, please, some God, somebody, see me. We're going to move forward. We're going to be a catalyst. So... We are now no longer Studio 120. We are Catalyst and Company. We are Catalyst and Company. And I think that embodies everything we've been trying. I was hoping to do, but didn't have the, um, not the confidence, but I think I was trying too hard to stay um, humbly, humbly confident. We're going to ditch that. We're going to, we're going with, we're going with confident. We're going with confident. And we are going to lead each other to be the artist we want to be. So here's, we'll finish up now. Um, and the, I'm going to be setting out a schedule to, to do, uh, a real solid schedule for new new videos and doing studio mate which we haven't done and everything's been willy-nilly and it's dependent on my mood we're putting aside the mood we're gonna be catalyst so I, all I have to finish up in here are putting uh, the centers in the cherry blossoms and then she's done she will be going, making away, will be going to the side to dry for a couple of days because she's headed to Fort Lauderdale on Sunday. And so I've got to let the oils dry. If you want to see more detailed pictures, they'll be up on Instagram and Facebook and the links are down below. They'll be up um, probably later today. So, all right, ready? We are Catalyst and Company. We, not me, we our Catalyst and Company. So this is Beck Lane with Catal uh, on Catalyst and Company. And uh, let's, I gotta find, now I gotta find a little tagline to go with that. Feeling good about it though. Anyway, let's go do some good work today. Let's go walk in, into our studios with confidence. Oh, another thing I want to do is teach people how to see artwork differently because I had a couple conversations this week that drove me over the edge. One of those, the images, you know, well, it's just not pretty and that doesn't look quite finished and blah, 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 blah. We're also going to discuss looking at artwork, seeing artwork and understanding artwork and not on a superficial level. We're going to be doing, getting into that and some other things. Anyway, we are Catalyst and Company. I am Beck Lane. Let's go take on the friggin' day. That could be the tagline, not so sure. But here we go. Ready? Let's go shower. Ciao. Ciao. And bye, Max. Grammy loves you. <laughs> Grammy Graham loves his ma her Max. Grammy Graham loves her Max. Ready? Mirror. Ciao. Mirror. 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 Boink.